Okay, this is the Family of Functions album uh, day. We are going over these functions. This is what you should have got in the sheet. Uh, you notice that it has th four, um, four logarithms, pages that are due uh, January 22nd, and then another three on February 1st, and then another four uh, due later. Each one of those, so there's a total of 11 different functions there. You have to describe all of these things about each one of those 11 functions. So it's really um, set it up. You've got to answer all these questions about each of the 11 functions up top there. And then I'll have a scoring rubric uh, where you're graded. You can see in the back of that sheet um, 14 points for each um, function that you turn in. So it ends up being over 100 points for the project. I'm not going to go into the scoring right now as much as I am just um, and I'm going to be very particular about the scoring. It's got, it's got to be exactly accurate. It does not have to be pretty. Um, your function can be on a eight and a half, should be on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. If you're rich, you can put on graph paper. If you're uh, not, uh, you could save your graph paper and just kind of paste it on, kind of like I pasted this graph paper here on a white piece of paper. Uh, you could do the same kind of thing. You could just have little. Uh, you must use graph for your graphs. You must use graph paper. So you can just plot little squares on there, or you can actually do it on graph paper as long as you want. It may You may be able to fit it. A lot of students can fit um, one function and all the information on one side of one sheet of paper. If you need to use the other side, that's fine. It's no problem. Again, I just want the information accurate. So here's our first function. It's told to be a logarithmic function. And by the way, if you copy this exactly, you'll have your first one out of four done. Because I'm basically doing this one for you as an example. So it says log like base a of x, where a is given 1. So the first thing you must do is choose a value for a. So I'm going to choose an easy value for a. So I'm going to say a equals 2. Um, again, you just have to pick some number. You can pick any value in there where a is bigger than 1 and go to town. Uh, but why not pick an easy value? So I'm going to plug in a is 1. So my function that I'm doing for this particular project would be f of x equals log base 2 of x. That's what I'm going to graph right here. That's what I'm going to do a table for, x. And instead of y, I'm going to use f of x there, but that's basically our y value. So if I uh, plug in um, some numbers here, let's uh, plug in some numbers. So let's say negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so forth. So I'm going to plug in um, negative 2. So when I plug in negative 2 into the function, I get log base 2 of negative 2. Oops, kind of hard to read that. Um, so log base 2 and negative 2. So 2 to what power is negative 2? Well, I can't really do that one. That's undefined, right? Not part of my graph. Can I take the log of a negative number? If x is negative, it's not going to work. This is undefined. We know that from a graph. You probably know the parent graph for this graph anyway. But let's plug in a few more numbers. 0. Can you take the log of 0? Log is 2 of 0. Well, that's equal to, I don't know, can't do it. Undefined also. So, in fact, there's actually an asymptote. So you would need to draw your asymptote there at x equals 0. Go ahead and label it. Now let's plug in 1. So let's plug in 1, log base 2 of 1. So I'm plugging in for x, log base 2 of 1. 2 to the what power is 1? 2 to the 0 power. So I'm going to plug in a 0 right there. That's 1 comma 0. Uh, log base 2 of 2, you probably know. That's 1. So 2, 1 is going to be a point. Maybe plug in 3. Uh, log base 2 of 3. And at this point, you're really going to have to stop and use your calculator, maybe get an approximate value. Um, once you graph a few more points, you might want to plug in 1 half there, uh, log base 2 of 1 half is really um, 2 to the negative 1 power, so uh, 1 half, negative 1, something like that. Pretty soon you see your graph is approaching the asymptote right there, it goes up, and I want to make sure you use actually get some of those points. You want to have at least five points for me to count it as correct. So if you have five points and you plot those five points, you're going to be correct on that. 
Um, so I would have to use my calculator to get that. It's fine to use your calculator this project, no problem. What's the domain and range of this? Well, you can look at it and tell the asymptotes x equals zero. So the domain is x is greater than zero. What's the range? Uh, the range would be all real, right? Because right, it goes up and down forever. X and y intercepts. Well, it crosses the x intercept at one comma zero. Is your x intercept? It doesn't look like it crosses the y-axis. The uh, doesn't have a y-intercept as an asymptote. It never touches it. Roots are a fancy way of saying uh, where does it cross the x-axis? Where does it cross the x-axis? Which the root would be x equals one. Notice I wrote this a little differently than I did this. Intercept uh, would be an ordered pair. I would accept it if you said x-intercept that one. Uh, but this, a root, typically is going to be written like this. So I want the form of this to be correct. Don't forget, it sounds silly, but uh, every year there's some students who forget to put an equal sign or put this. They just put log 2 of x and say, well, that's the graph of log 2 of x. No, it has to be an equation. I'll mark it wrong for the equation. Maybe that's one of the forms on there if you don't actually uh, use that. This is on symmetry. So is this symmetrical about the x-axis? Can I fold this side over onto this side? No. Fold, can I fold it over the y-axis? No, there is no symmetry in this graph. And you can double check that um, if you remember by plugging in. Remember you plug in a negative x into the function. And then if it works out the same, it has symmetry about the y-axis. Is if it's a negative, it symmetry around the x-axis. Is it even, odd, or neither? So even is the same thing as y-axis symmetry. These two are basically the same thing. It's, it's not even. Odd is when um, it rotates around the axis. So the axis is kind of the center, and you have a graph that kind of rotates around um, there, 180 degrees. No, it's not that, and neither. So this is really uh, neither would be the case here. Uh, it's definitely neither function. So let's go back down here. So again, the original graph is y equals uh, log base 2 of x. We chose the base of 2. So we're going to go graph of f of negative x. Well, when we have this inside of this, it's going to be reflection across the y-axis. So if you take the normal graph, it looks like that. Reflected across the y-axis, that point becomes here, here, and it's really bad graph though, but something like that, where the asymptote is at x equals zero. Maybe label when it is any point, and we just want to label one zero. Need to go on that one. Notice I don't ask for the equation, I just say graph it. I believe there. Don't, I may want to double check that, but I think I just say graph it. So I don't need you to write the equation, just graph. So this is really reflection over the x-axis, because it's in front of the function. So if you take your normal graph, it looks like this, reflect it over the x, it starts looking like this. Again, x equals zero. You want to identify a point. And then this one you haven't seen before. So um, let's say let's do this in another color first. This is the original parent graph, right? Looks like this. Got the asymptote there. Um, Okay, so on this one, um, absolute value basically means that there would be no negative y values. 
So if there are, you're going to flip those up to make them positive y values. Like this goes to the point right here at uh, 1 half comma negative 1. So it's going to go up to here. This point is like 1 fourth negative 2 is going to go up to 1 fourth positive 2. Pretty soon this, this part of the graph right here that goes from here to here is going to flip up. It's going to look a lot like that. So this is not part of my graph. Uh, you would uh, erase that, I guess. And your graph is basically this graph here. Right? Goes here, kind of bounces off that zero, and goes like that. And so that is the graph of the value. All you do is bring all the negative points up. Same graph, just move them up. That's what absolute value does. Graph and the equation of this for inverse. So this one I need both. So in this case, I'm going to go, I'm going to start with uh, y equals log plus 2 is x, which is our original function. The big idea of inverse is we split to our x's and y's. Solve for y. Well, how do I solve for y? Well, you're going to put in exponential form. This is log form. Exponential form would be 2 to the power of x equals y. Well, that works. So y equals 2 to the x, except I don't want to write it like this. I want to write it, I want to kind of fill off part the inverse of f of x is 2 to the x. And we should have known that because um, inverses and logs, they're, I mean, exponentials and logs are inverses of each other. So we know that function looks like this. Crosses through, I mean, it has an asymptote at y equals 0. So here's our equation again, right? Because it has an equal sign. It has some nice notation there. I'm going to be a stickler on the notation here. I want it to look like this. Um, different functions are going to have different functions there, but as far as the, the way this looks, it says write the equation on the graph. One point for this, one point for this. Label a point in there, 0, 1 would be perfect, and you got it. This last one, this also I think is probably the most confusing part of the project would be this one thing. It's one family member. Sometimes students will try to turn in two or three or four graphs for this. I want one function, so I emphasize this here in the instructions. But I want it shifted in a couple different directions. It's got to go move horizontally, it's got to move vertically, and it must be stretched. So let's start with um, y equals log base 2 of x. Right, so I've got to do a couple things to this. I've got to stretch it. So I'm going to put uh, a 2 in front. It's going to stretch it. And I'm going to move it maybe uh, one unit to the right. That should do that. I'm going to maybe uh, move it uh, three units up. So I, I took care of all three things here. This stretches, this moves it to the right, this moves it up. So now what I have to do, and I can use my calculator if I need to, um, I need to graph this. And so I know I'm just going to kind of go a step at a time here. I start it. This is my normal function. The y values are stretched by a factor of 2, so it won't affect this point. That point stays there, but it'll kind of get a little taller. Um, so it'll kind of look something like that-ish. Just gets a little bit taller. I could get to some of those points if I need to. Probably be a good idea too in this case. This is going to move it one to the right. So I'm going to take every point here and move it one to the right. This point is one to the right. Um, the asymptote moves one to the right. So it looks something like this, roughly. Didn't curve that much there. And then the three, this moves it up, right? Stretch move to the right and up. So I'm going to actually my final graph, and I'll probably just erase the rest, we'll take this point and move it three units up. This point, move it one, two, three units up. And pretty soon I've got this graph. This is my actual graph of the function. Again, the asymptote is still there at x equals one. That's the project. You just got to just repeat that uh, for all 12 functions. You can work in groups. 
Uh, but it's an individual project. You must turn in your own project. Again, it doesn't have to look pretty. It just needs to be accurate.